the advantage of a sex duple is is rather than getting a lift shot they get a very very long one very very long shot the disadvantage is it's very very hard for you and it's more likely you'll make a mistake and let them in or, or simply not finish and have to give them a, a contact you have to be thinking that you're going to be doing sex duples you know maybe, maybe 70 percent of the time that mm -hmm. sort of level and particularly in the latter stages in a game against John Evans I think at this stage I may even have won my block already at that stage I can probably get away with a mistake no disrespect to John but um, so so in a way I'm, I'm playing and practicing at the same time in the latter stages it, it will become sort of do or die Got a nice uh, football break. It's no problem from here do, doing whatever I would like. So I could go to full back. I think at this point I'm I'm really um, thinking about a whole tournament tactics. The, I think the best way to prepare for the rest of the tournament is is to um, try and play one back tactics, which means laying up in third corner with the opponent crosswired at hoop one um, and I'll be trying to do that in this turn
So what I'm doing here, I'm making a crosswire. Now, when you're trying to crosswire balls at a hoop, before you make the hoop you're on, you, you really need to have one of the opponent's balls and your ball over at the hoop. In this case, I'm going to make hoop 5 and try and get a rush back to hoop 1 and leave green and brown crosswired at hoop 1. Now, the, the crosswiring is quite important that you... When the opponent's on hoop 1, you've, you've got to make sure that, first of all, they don't have an easy shot at hoop 1. And then in terms of actually getting the crosswire, you really like the balls not to be level with the hoop. You like them to be slightly skew with the hoop, so that you've got a larger area to, to wire the opponent. If you actually get the balls flat, then you've only got the, the sort of one wire to wire them behind. If you can get it at a slight angle, then it gives you a lot more room for error. I tend to make cross wires for, for a one bet leave by getting the cross wire and then rushing to hoop six. This is, there's a small risk I might not make hoop six, but it does allow you the chance to um, come back and sort out the wiring if you do make a mess of it. And at Sonoma, really, I'm not taking a great risk. Uh, by making that play. But there's a small chance I might not make hoop 6 by doing that. But uh, uh, so I take the risk just to make sure I get the cross wiring. If you, if you were to get to the point where you've made hoop 6 and you still haven't got the cross wire and it's, you're still not sure you're going to get the cross wire, you actually have to play it in a way where rather than getting a rush to corner 3, you, you you play it, so you got to rush to one back, and if you got if the crosswire worked out okay, you would then sort of cut the ball and, and roll over to corner three. And if you screwed up the crosswire, you just have to go and make one back, and and carry on to four back. It just allows you to um, gives you the sort of escape chance. What I try and do uh, here, um, a common, uh, quite a common mistake you'll see is people don't really realise how far apart you have to put your balls for uh, your balls not to be some kind of double. At 35 yards, um, you know, they can hit the wrong ball, um, you know, a yard apart. So um, I try and leave them quite a long way apart and ideally... Uh, one wire from the other. They're wired from the balls at the far end. But John's probably here and only got the white to shoot out. I've probably got the peg in the way of him shooting at pink just to make sure he hasn't got a shot. Similarly, green probably would have been wired from the white. I'm just going to get green on the court near hoop three. My priority at the minute is getting white nicely over to hoop two. Normally when you're playing, your, your priority is very much with doing what you want with the striker's ball. So if you make a mistake with the striker's ball, that's usually the end of a turn. And in a way that where the forward ball goes on the crocus strokes is only a, sort of a problem later on. But when you're, when you're doing a peeling turn like this, 
your your priorities are, are change. So you play a lot of shots where you're you're almost more concerned with the pele rather than the striker's ball. So I tend to tend to make hoop one and try and get a rush actually back to the ball near hoop three. But it doesn't doesn't really matter if we get a straight rush up to white, which I think is what I've done this time. It's so gonna want to peel white through one back. Um really all the way up to two back so so to do that I'm, I'm gonna put green a reasonable distance away maybe um, four yards up the court and now I'm going to uh, as I approach the hoop I'm going to put white behind the hoop um, ideally I'd actually rather be playing this from in front of the hoop sending white further here there's a slight chance I could play a bad shot and not be in front of the hoop, which is obviously the worst thing you can do. I'd probably rather played that figure and got white square behind the hoop, but it looks okay. I've rubbed the hoop cleanly, I think I'd have, with a bit more luck I'd have uh, got a little bit of wire, but, so I'm going to have to hit this gently and, and just try and hit a probably half ball. So here I'm going to, I'm going to allow a little bit of pull. So I'm playing this with a, a split shot, um, a drive shot. So I'm actually going to, it's fairly hard to tell from this picture, but white will actually be aimed slightly into the right wire and will have, will have drawn. Well, in fact, you could, you could just see from there, it, the ball actually went three yards past two back, which is, um, it's not bad, but it does mean if I wasn't to get a rush out of hoop three, um, I'm in a bit of trouble because I'm a, a long way away from going to go and adjust that ball, which, I, which I'm going to need to do. So I, I very, very much need a rush out of hoop three. Uh, I should be able to get it from that kind of accurate position there. So I want to uh, get a rush on green and rush it all the way down behind the white ball, which is, say, roughly three yards in front of hoop one. Well, that's it's not too bad. I should be able to cut that somewhere near. If white was in a good position, I, I have a chance of peeling white uh, with a takeoff type shot going to hoop four. Um, in this case, I'll, I'll probably be trying that, but um, depends how well uh, that goes. And really, I think white's in a good enough position. My I expect to get this, but you, if you see where I've left brown, that's somewhere where I could again 
go for the peel and um, get a rush to eat five. Yeah, I'd be a bit disappointed not to have, have got that in the jaws, at least. Um, generally, most of the time when you're peeling, if you get the ball in the jaws, then it's not too bad. You can you can rush it through next time. I've, I've played deliberately to um, get a rush by running the hoop hard off the boundary. It's it's if you're not making the hoop with complete control, you can guarantee some kind of rush by doing that, unless you get a very severe angle out of the hoop. So I'm probably going to have to get very accurately to this ball, which is sitting on the wire of two back. This is a bit nasty because uh, potentially you could get cross wired. If you get too far away from it, it's likely to um, bounce away from the hoop. So I need to get very, very accurately near this white ball. So hopefully I can knock it into the into the jaws. But I don't think it, you can rush peel that ball. You can see if I was short there, I could possibly get cross wired. But I'm I'm a long way away from white. I'd like to be half that distance really from the white. This one I'll be I'll be hitting it gently. There's a chance it could bounce right across the hoop. You can see it's gone partially across the hoop. So it may go or may just be putting it back in the jaws again. I've left green there deliberately so that um, I could play that sort of shot and have a, a short rush to hoop five. So I've got this peel sort of in the bag. I just need to get the right side of white. Uh, and I'm really thinking now about the next peel. I'm um, probably going to peel three back with a big roll. Going to this Pioneer at one back I'm, I'm now loading. Um, and I'm really making sure that that Pioneer is... is I don't want to put that pioneer too far. Uh, we'll see in a minute when I play the big roll uh, from free back. Now this is one of these shots where really my priority is is very much with the PLE. I really want this to go square in front of free back. And in a way, I'll accept any kind of free yard roquet on the ball at hoop six, but I really only care about the ball to. Uh, free back and that's you know that's pretty poor ball really there but um, in a way the ball I most care about is being right in front of free back so I'm playing here for a rush back towards free back so so I can get to the Pele nice and accurately So ideally this would be a bit shorter. Looks like it's um if anything it's like cut as well, so So I haven't really done it having said I was trying to make white a priority, I haven't really played it very well because I'd rather it was in front of freeback. And if anything, I'm slightly lucky I haven't put it straight the other side of free back, and in which case th this little rush here would be impossible. I'm just trying to look for a nice spot where I can peel going to one back. If I hit this straight, I could end up with a, a fairly easy looking peel, but, but with the hoop plumb in the way of getting anywhere near the one back pioneer. So I'm trying to leave an angle 
there it, that, that's great because that's straight you can see if white was another six inches to the right three back would be in the way so there's got this big roll going to um, the one back pioneer if anything I like the one back pioneer to be shorter so it's easier to get to So I've done a sort of so-so job again with green. I should, I should hit that, and I'm, at least I'm the right side of it. I'm going to get organised to try and peel four back with an escape ball near four back, such, such that I can then rush that ball to three back. So I'm going to try and get both the brown and the white up to full back. And then this shot needs a lot of accuracy with both balls. Brown needs to be in a very good spot to be able to peel and get a rush back up to free back. And that's that's great. Here I am um, not going to try and cut the ball right up to full back because um, if you don't cut it enough, you end up virtually rushing it to um, corner three, which would which would be useless. So it's better to um, go for less cut and, and play a thick takeoff to the two back pioneer. Um, I'm not in great shape there. Um, I very much need a rush out of two back. If I don't get any kind of rush out of two back, I have to play an enormous roll up to four back. Um, I'm unlikely to be able to get close enough to the peely to then leave it in a nice position for peeling. Then you can see the slight slope there to give me an angled hoop. No, I've got a nice rush. So I'm looking for to get over to white and get a nice rush in it so the peels from no distance. actually going to play screen where later on I might be able to peel penult um, getting a rush on green to fall back but the priority is getting a nice rush on white Now here is the yeah, it's a crucial shot here. I, I need the peel to, to go through. It has just gone through. And I needed a great rush to free back. And that's a very important touch shot. The main thing here is 
probably getting past the hoop is quite important because you, you really want to rush back up the court. So it's almost better to be there than a foot away from the hoop on the wrong side because it's much easier to get some kind of forward rush. So this is a bit of a long row, okay, but at least it's in the right direction. So I want to try and peel Penalt now. I'm going to put Brown up the court so that I've got a chance of um, getting the peel and then sending white to rove again to uh, brown I've got a nice rush on white you can see I definitely want the peel to go through to give myself a chance of this that's turned out pretty well most sex duples probably wouldn't get that chart and I'd end up peeling the last two hoops by playing a an Irish peel through penalt from very short range, uh, which would get the ball up to Rover, but uh, in this case it's worked out better than that. I could have peeled Penalt with a split shot, but um, I was confident of hitting that three yarder okay reasonably well. So I made sure of the peel. From now on, you know, I really ought to finish the turn. There's no, it's nothing very difficult, uh, particularly at Sonoma where the lawns are almost perfect. I just want to take a little bit of care to get a nice rush on white. You wouldn't really want to have a play, a big croquet stroke getting to white because penultimate could get in the way. A Brava Brown was, was near a penult, but um, that's a result of having that long roquet out of free back. Uh, that was about the best place I could get Brown to. But at least it's sort of in the south. Well, it's well south of Penultimate, which means I'm sending that ball to Rover from quite a close distance. You wouldn't really want the ball three yards in front of... If you had Brown three yards in front of Penultimate, uh, you, you'd have to send the ball for Rover from too far away. So, So it wasn't a bad spot. Uh, White's nice and near Rover, I, I imagine I will end up having to, uh, well, being able to peel White with a, with a little Irish peel. Um, so I probably haven't put Green very deep. Um, if you were thinking about playing the peel from long range, you'd um, put the Green quite deep so you've got the chance to uh, jump over the white whereas here I'm, I'm expecting that there's no way I'll end up playing a jump shot so green's not really that far down the court I, th I think now where I've got green I'll probably play it gently so you played an Irish peel you could conceivably finish an inch through where you couldn't hit anything 
ideally green would have been perfectly at the side of the hoop so if you were an inch through you would still be able to hit green it looks like I'm going to cannon white it's there's no great need to cannon white because it's far enough away from rover but isn't there's no reason not to here um, the main thing here is I'm making sure I get a nice rush back on the um, other ball And you just make sure you take that last rush a little bit to shorten wide of the peg. And that's it. 